period of time. So if the number comes in as like 42, then what it's going to do is it's going to take the 4, multiply it by 10 to make it 40, and then add the next number, which would be the 2, to it. So that way you have 42 is now in int x. Otherwise, if you, if you don't kind of do this math, you'll have like 4 plus 2, so you'll have like just 6. So you want to make sure you have 42. So um, the first digit is, is basically the tens column, and the next digit is the ones. So you do this for both of them. That way you get your two numbers. Then basically you have your, then you set the width of your label, which in order to basically get this kind of function, when I've got this 11 times in x minus 35, um, you first figure out with your accelerometer, you tilt it as far as it'll go one way and tilt it as far as it goes the other way, so you can get a range of values. So you figure out what your range is, you know, how, how far the accelerometer sweeps, basically. Once you figure that out, then you come back to your label and if you click on it and then go to whoops go to down to size here we go size you've got 253 by 23 so now obviously you know it's length and width so you don't care about the 23 you know the 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 width of it or the yeah the width of it you want the length of it which is 253 so what you're gonna do is once you find out what s basically swath your uh, accelerometer has you know whether it has, you know it's got basically 50 units from you know as far let's say left as you can twist it as the far right as you can twist it um, if it's like 50 units or where well you, then your 253 is going to be divided by 50 let's say and then that's how many basically pixel widths of size that you're going to increment by as you see the different numbers come through. And so that's basically what you're seeing here is this 11 times in x minus 35. The minus 35 is, uh, I think in mine, I can't remember the exact numbers, but um, like I said, that's kind of dependent on what type of accelerometer that you're using. It depends on its resolution, what it is. So you just kind of figure that up and then times 11, and I think what that what I'm doing here is I'm subtracting 35 so I get each integer value basically I represent that that swath is you know I'm getting integers basically so I'm getting either a one two three four five and you know so on and so forth then I'm I mine was an 11 units uh, increment basically every time the accelerometer moves up one unit I move 11 units in the width of the of the label so then it just multiplies that multiplies that by 11 and that's how that's how it moves so for every unit in the accelerometers uh, resolution I'm moving 11 units in in uh, in the label unit so that way I get a smooth you know I get an accurate movement of what it's doing and so that's all you do you just say the label dot width is equal to that and so then that moves it you know back and forth basically so then, and then what this stuff is, is I put um, another label on the screen. You can't really see it. Let me scroll down so you can see it. I put another label on the screen just to display what I'm getting from the accelerometer, just so I can kind of see it. And that kind of helps with debugging as well, just in case you maybe, maybe as you're playing with it and trying to get your kind of your, your equation set up for the, the resolution of it, um, you may you may get some you know get some funky stuff going until you get that tweak just perfect. Well, so you make sure that you're seeing the right stuff coming across the port, or just making sure that you know your information is getting transmitted properly. It's nice to put a put just a label just anything just just a label box on here and then basically whatever the serial data that comes across you just print to that label so that's what this is doing that's what this str val is doing is i'm using the c string conversion what that does is takes your array and uh, your array of characters and converts that into string format which then you can set the text uh, property of your label to that string and then that way it just it just prints it straight to that that label and so that's what we're that's what we're doing. And in a nutshell, that's pretty much it um, for it um, for the demonstration. You can just refer back to that previous video that I had made that uh, shows you it shows you it moving around. You basically you just open it up. You click the click the port open button. Um, it runs through the port open commands, 
and uh, does that try statement, opens up the port, sends, uh, starts collecting data. Um, when you click start, it begins the whole process of collecting data and comparing it and then moving these widths around and then it just moves them moves them up and down and left and right and all that cool stuff and then that's how you can that's how you can see it so kinda to recap um, you need your you do need this application do events otherwise when you're click start and you're in your loop you won't be able to click stop and stop it it won't it won't recognize the the click the mouse click so you definitely want to have that application dot do events in there so that does that um, you basically want to have a while statement that has nothing in it so that way just in case if when the minute you click start you you don't happen to be right in the middle of it transmitting at that instance you know you're at the maybe at the y coordinate instead of being at the x coordinate so you you wait for the wait for the start of the line basically which i just waited for that first uh character that x and then you go into your for loop you use the serial port one dot read char um, that will that will read character by character it in and I'm also using if you notice I'm using the CHR um, what that will do is that will actually if you just do the serial port one dot read char sorry I didn't explain that I forgot about that being there um, what it will do is it will read in the hexadecimal ASCII values for each character so you know whatever the hex code is for an A or a B or an a, or in our case an X, a Y, you know, uh, the numbers and everything, whatever the hex code will be, that's what it'll save in your char. Or yeah, this char right here, your char array, which you don't want and you could either do it one of two ways. You could either have um, this char right here, which saves the actual letter itself, not the hex code for it. And then later on, when you're doing this val or whatever, you'd have to do char again. You'd have to do this char command uh, down here. And I just figured I'd just do it once up there. That way, I don't have to type it over and over down through those two deals. Um, just saves, you know, saves code. So you just type it once that char, and that will convert all the hexadecimal codes to actual characters. Save them into your array. Then you wait for the end of line uh, or new line in this case. Jump out of your loop. And then, and then begin your calculation. And remember that it stores literally character by character. So it a 42 is actually two characters. It's not uh, a single number integer. It's it's actually two characters since it's being represented as characters. So you kind of got to do that little conversion here. You got to take the value of your two different things. You got to take the first character that's in the tens place, multiply it by ten, and then add the ones place to it. So that way you get your your double digited number and then basically then figure out you know like I said per accelerometer figure out which what your resolution is and then just build up kind of a little function that will um, translate the resolution of it of the accelerometer to the resolution of your label that you've got and again you find how wide your label is by the size property that's over here and all you gotta do is just click on your label scroll pretty much to the bottom and it's right there 253 is mine um, yours may be bigger or smaller depending on uh, how wide you make this so that could vary um, with your programs and so just come up with your with your deal and then I, I just just for convenience just for debugging purposes I like to throw another label on there convert my array to a string and then print that string to that label so that way I can I can see what's coming across the serial line to make sure that uh, that I'm reading things in properly so and that's pretty much it uh, in a nutshell very simple um, please continue to watch um, I'll probably be posting more videos um, you know, things have been a little hectic uh, here lately I've been kinda busy so um, I, it may be a little slow but but they are coming uh, we'll be looking at uh, some other things um, actually I've just got some new stuff um, to show everyone a lot of people like the the new touch sensing which is a pretty slick, pretty slick deal. Um, you can with the touch sensors. Basically, all you do is pour like a copper pour pad, hook a hook a trace to it, take it back to a chip that has the M Touch technology that uh, Microchip is doing, and you can basically just touch that pour pad uh, with your finger, and it'll actually sense it. And so, and you can put paper in between it, uh, plastic, you know, and all that stuff for covers on it, and it'll sense your finger through it you know since it's a capacitive touch type stuff so we'll be, we'll probably be playing with that um, 
those are going to be pretty cool. So I think I'm I'm going to play with those sometimes. So I'll ma I'll make some videos on the the M Touch technology by Microchip and how to how to hook that up and make it work because it's it's a pretty slick deal. So pretty cool, interesting stuff coming for the future. So um, please subscribe, please comment any questions that you have. If I went through this a little too fast, um, I'll try to try to answer any questions that you all may have. But uh, until then, continue programming, continue building, uh, and I'll see you next time.